What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now we are on video 7 in our series of my 2024 rig rundown and I've been showing you all throughout this series what equipment I've been using in 2024 and in today's video we're going to jump over here to the table and look at the camera systems that I've chose to use for 2024 and I'll give you a little backstory to each one of why I chose to use that particular camera so with that being said let's jump over here and we'll get started all right guys here is my 2024 lineup for underwater cameras and it's not a big lineup it's just three simple camera systems here uh, you will notice that there is one the sport diver housing that looks a little bit different than what it did back in 2022 and that's simply because i took the light system of it or took the light system and tray system off of it. So with that being said, I'll kind of explain why I did that, but let's jump over here to the right and we'll just go right to left here. This is the RM4K from Sea Life, and this is just my go-to video camera. So this is a, a set it and forget it type of camera. It's an action cam. Uh, of course, the camera's inside the housing here. But it's just a, a simple four button camera. So I've got an on and off button. This is your shutter if you're taking pictures or videos. And then you got a Wi Fi and menu button over here on the side that you can scroll through. And yeah, like I said, it's just a set it and forget it, super easy, very intuitive camera. Uh, for underwater, uh, say, video and things like that. And, of course, I teach with this camera, too. So if I'm teaching underwater photo and videos, this is typically going to be the camera that I teach uh, or use during the video session of that. But it's super easy to use. Now, moving on over to the next camera. This is the GoPro Hero 12. Um, and I'm not a big GoPro fan. I, I used to be in the past, and then I kind of got away from them, then kind of come back to them. But most of you guys will know that we're part of the TV show Deep Water Salvage on the Weather Channel. Channel. And they actually require us to use these GoPros when we're underwater. So I do use the GoPro. It comes in very handy when I do salvage and public safety work and commercial diving work. And of course, like I said, that's kind of what they require us to use there on uh, for TV purposes. And yeah, it's just super easy to mount. And once again, it's a set it and forget it. Once we start filming, we hit the shutter button, it starts recording, and then we kind of forget about it. And of course, I can mount this guy in many different ways, but usually my, my mount of choice is just a head mount. And typically, I'll either mount it directly to my mask with one of the GoPro mounts there. If I'm, say, in a full face mask, I can mount it directly to the top. Or even if I'm in a non-full face mask situation, but I've got a helmet on, maybe an overhead environment, maybe if I'm in a water intake or something, I can just mount it directly to my helmet up there and so yeah it's just a super easy records up to 4k but cool little fun fact for you most time we just record in 1080p and you know 30 frames a second nothing really fancy because the production company actually does all the editing for us on the show so yeah we don't really have to have anything super fancy for that and then of course my sea life sport diver housing this is my last go-to. Uh, like I said, I did take the light tray off of this. I don't really use it much anymore. Um, typically, this camera is really just used for, you know, just entertainment purposes. Anytime we're teaching students, we need to record them in a pool or something like that. Maybe we're doing a perfect buoyancy class or a side mount class, and I want to record their trim or something. I'll use the Sea Life. I've got the XS Max iPhone on the inside. I know you can get these for, or they'll work for both iPhone and Droids, um, but that's just what I'm using. And like I said, I don't really need that light tray in the pool. I'm not really posting pictures with this. Uh, my business partner does most of our social media work outside of YouTube. And so he's got a different camera system he uses, but this is just what I'm using. And that light tray was just kind of getting a little too bulky for me, especially if I'm traveling, maybe I'm down in the Caribbean or something like that. But I like the sport diver housing. It's super easy to use. It's, you know, airtight. And one cool feature about this, I know I talked about it in the last video series, or actually I talked about it in our review of this i'll link the review for this particular uh camera housing down below uh, but i talked about if the battery fails because it's wi-fi connected say between your phone and the housing itself if the battery fails you can still use the housing you just set your phone in normal camera mode hit record and boom seal it in and off you go so i do like that feature as well but uh yeah i just really truly enjoy this it's super easy to use and i can take pictures with it or video and of course i don't really need a light system if i've got the um the filter there on it as well so yeah that's kind of why i took the light tray off so there you go guys nothing really fancy but that's the three different camera systems that i'm using in 2024 and i do want to make a quick note here i know i get asked a lot why don't you do better editing on your underwater videos and there's actually two reasons for that one i'm gonna be honest with you i 
you know, underwater photography and videography, other than here on YouTube, is not really my thing, in all honesty. There, there's other things I enjoy doing underwater than having to, you know, come out and edit and add all these colors back in and buy a bunch of light systems. I do have light trays for each one of these, but I rarely use them. So that's kind of the first thing. I just don't have the drive or the passion for that type of thing. Um, and number two, I want our videos to be as real as they can possibly be. I want them to be as raw. And I've mentioned this in the past. Anytime that we go underwater, the things that we actually see, we want you guys to see. We don't want you to see the edited, all the pretty corals and all the different fishes. You know, when we do our salvage videos, what we see is what you are going to see. You're going to see the darkness. You're going to see the bland colors, if there's any colors to begin with. And we want you to understand what we do is real. We don't fake any of this here on our channel. We don't fake it for TV. It is real, and we want you guys to see that. So that's another reason I don't do a lot of heavy editing, and that's also why I don't put a big investment into my camera systems as well, because I want our videos to be real and raw. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned. We've got several more videos coming out. I believe we're going to come up on videos 8 and 9 in the series. That's where we're going to be looking at my exposure suits and our accessories as well that I'm currently using. So I really think they'll be intuitive for you and be educational as well. But guys, if you like this video, give me a big thumbs up definitely share it as well and let me know down in the comment section below do you like the fact that our videos are real they're not heavily edited it's real footage when we're underwater let me know if you like that or if you think i should put a little bit more time and effort into them just to make it look a little prettier for here on youtube but guys that's going to do it for today take care god bless and i'll see you in the next video